Okay, I think we can start now. No? So I'm recording this session as well. So good afternoon, everyone, especially sa mga pumasok na yan, no? Uh, shout out kay Lloyd at Wes. Okay. Um, for this session, by the way, kasi uh, actually nagkaroon ako ng minor accident, no? So uh, one-handed lang ako ngayon. So baka medyo slow yung pace natin kasi I can't move around as effectively, no? So um we'll probably do just maybe one or two examples for today no and a few ano lang uh, parang siguro clarifications or um uh, walk through dun sa mismong module itself no okay so let's begin with uh, the module muna let me transfer to my ano no yeah okay so Uh, I, I won't walk through everything, no? but I think the most important is uh, the portion where we do the slab analysis. No? So I, I can probably walk you through that. No? So this is important because um, almost all of our calculations, dito, lalo na sa MIT 177, no? it's almost um, entirely based on the slab analysis. And I've mentioned before in previous sessions na hindi lang ito yung only analysis that you can do when you're co computing for uh, metal deformation or deformation processing loads no? or stresses. Okay, So there are plenty of other ways. So, uh, But in this course, we will only cover one of uh, the possible solutions, no? which is, again, known as your slab analysis. Okay, So the slab analysis works this way. No? So let's... Uh, take a simple and we use uh, forging first no kasi forging is perhaps the simplest na parang system uh, in in terms of the formation processing that we can do to uh, to possibly uh, get a a forging load value no or a forging stress value okay so uh, we begin with this uh, ano no itong figure na to if you look at this figure so meron kang you can see na this is a simple forging system which, which has an open die system so you have two dies uh isa sa taas isa sa baba and they are um they are moving towards each other such that you are applying compressive load dun sa etong metal natin which is um which is represented by this parang light blue na ano no na na middle portion right here okay so uh we set an an uh, a arbitrary na ano no or not arbitrary, we, we set a center line. So the, the way it works is, uh, since this is open die forging, uh, usually we produce a, parang, I don't know, a symmetrical parang loading. No? If, if left on its own, this should pr produce a symmetrical na, na type of loading. Okay. So um, we set x equals to zero, which is x equals zero is just the middle line no? of where the metal uh where the metal is being um parang forged no so if you look at it ito sa portion na to we call this entire length here as your byte no so we call this at a byte uh and this is explained more in detail sa sa i don't know uh, i'm going nagsiskip lang ako uh, ng parts kasi na-explain naman to in more de details sa module no pero itong entire length na to from where the material or the metal is in contact with your die is called the byte. No? So, hindi siya yung length ng die, kundi length siya ng metal that is in contact with uh, the die. Okay? So, this is your... Uh, sorry, may, may sinapi ka, Lloyd? Or Wes? Wala naman. Mukhang wala ata. Okay, sige. So, let me continue. No? So, meron tayong byte. Tapos yung byte na yun, uh, we called it, uh, parang simplify natin siya as B lang. No? So uh, whenever you see the symbol B, that uh, that always, almost always means the byte. No? Okay? So ito, uh, if you have half of the byte, so you take the center point of the byte, then that is where our analysis begins. So that is where X is equal to zero. Okay? So uh, if we take a slab, so for example, um, and this is an infinitesimal slab, no? So parang ang gagawin natin is kuha tayo ng parang infinitesimal na, na or kuha tayo ng isang slab which has an infinitesimal thickness of dx tapos extract natin yung slab na yun. So we should find out that it should look something like this, no? So ito, so ginawa natin is pra, itong slab na to, 
kinuha natin siya, in-extract natin. Tapos, gumawa tayo ng parang ano no, uh, force analysis sa kanya. Okay? So, we look at uh, the uh, stresses sa taas, stresses sa right side, stresses sa left side, and so on and so forth. Okay? Tapos, um, obviously, the uh, height here is uh, the height of the metal that we are uh, we are forging. So, ito siya represented by H. Tapos, yung length natin, um, in, in this uh, particular scenario, no, it doesn't really matter kung gano'n siya kalayo no, or gano'n siya kahaba. So, in this sense, we are assuming what we call as uh, plane strain conditions. No? So, isulat ko lang dito, plane strain. So, hopefully by now, if you've read your modules, you've already know what plane strain means. Plane strain just means that uh, we are uh, deforming our metal in, in two directions only, no? Okay, so we begin with plane strain kasi mas madaling i-calculate kasi sa plane strain. No? And from plane strain, pwede natin siyang i-, i kumbaga, we, we make an analogous case for yung non-plane strain conditions where we, well, and we call this non-plane strain conditions as homogeneous conditions. No? Homogeneous. Homogeneous conditions. Okay, so pag plane strain, ibig lang sabihin nun, we are moving or we are straining your metal or deforming your metal in only two directions. That's why it's a plane. Pag homogenous, then we're deforming our metal in all three directions. So that's X, Y, and Z. Okay. So this particular case, so if you look at this, uh, we are actually dealing with uh, X and Y directions. No? So this is your parang ganyan yung axis natin. So we have the Y axis and we have the x axis so we are assuming that on the z axis there is no straining involved so that's what we mean when we say plane strain condition okay and and later uh, i'll show you kailan natin pwedeng i-assume na plane strain siya kailan uh, kailan natin siya i i i uh, treat as homogeneous then okay so dito we are assuming plane strain so ang two straining na mangyayari dyan is uh, yung parang decreasing of the H value or the height. So it's it's straining in this direction. And at the same time, it's also um, increasing in the X direction. So nagde-decrease siya in the Y direction, tas nag-increase siya in the X direction um, along the direction of the bite. No? So kung nasan yung bite nyo, uh, that direction will be the X direction. Okay? Tapos kung ano yung direction ng uh, forging load nyo, and in this case, it's the y direction. So our die our, our die is moving uh, downward dito, and it's moving upward dito sa bottom die. Then uh, that is uh, the y direction. Yan yung direction ng uh, forging load natin or yung forging stress. Okay. So we have this lab. Tapos we can set up the uh, analysis. No, and uh, I, I won't go into much detail. Pero you should end up. Uh, by doing a, a balancing of the forces in the x and the y, y direction. And this is actually in the x direction, no? parang fx. Uh, if you remember your ano, um, ES101 ata to. So parang we set a summation of forces along the x direction equal to uh, zero. Okay? So parang ganun yung ginawa natin. No? So setting uh, summation of forces along x equal to zero. Then we have this equation. So you should end up with something that looks like this. No? Now you rearrange, you will end up with this. Tapos, uh, you need to apply a, I don't know. So from here, hindi, hindi pa natin clearly makikita kung, um, kung baga, kasi ang, ang gusto kasi natin express siya in, in terms of sigma y. no? Because sigma y here is actually uh, yung forging load na hinahanap natin or forging stress na hinahanap natin. Okay? So, if you look at it, sigma y, siya yung acting on the y direction, which is, again, uh, the, the uh, important na value of interest for, for us metallurgical engineers. No? Okay? So, so, para natin ma-simplify ma to into sigma y, we actually need uh, a yield criteria. No? And uh, what we actually use is itong, itong value na to. So, this comes from, so if you look at this, this is important because ito yung, kumbaga, i- gagamitin natin is substitute natin papasok dito. So, where this um, comes from comes from is from your actually from the von Mises criterion, to, no? Pero it's it's stated in a different way. If you look at it para kakaiba siya no kasi if you remember von Mises is sigma 1 minus sigma 2 squared something like this, no? Plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 squared plus 
sigma uh, sigma ano ba to? 1 minus sigma 3 squared is equal to uh, k squared. No? Tama ba? I think that's correct. No? K squared. So, uh, magtaiba siya. If you look at it, para nas kasimplify na. So, this is actually um, simplified by inputting what we call as the Levi. I forgot the spelling. I think it's Levi Mises. Parang so may tinitawag tayong Levi-Mises equation no? for plane strain condition. So in plane strain condition, yung Levi-Mises equation states that the intermediate stress is equal is just equal to the average of the two uh, primary stresses. Okay, So uh, in this case, so for example, uh, we are looking at sigma y and sigma z. No? Because if you remember, and baka hindi pa to na-discuss, no? Uh, you, you can just think about it yourselves. No? So try to imagine, kung meron kang plane strain condition, does that mean na meron tayong uh, plane stress condition? So uh, some thought experiment. No? So kunwari, plane strain condition tayo such that ito yung material natin. No? And our material is moving uh, in the X. So nag-expand siya dyan. And uh, nag-move siya also in the y direction no? so parang um nababawasan yung kumbaga yung uh, yung height niya okay so parang ang end if you uh, transform this para siyang magiging it's longer on the x direction and it's shorter on the y direction so para magiging ganyan yung uh, final product niya but all the while maintaining this uh, z direction no etong z kung if this is uh, x y z so this x, y, and z. So you can see that the z direction and medyo pangit yung drawing ko, no? So I should draw this such that mukha silang same lang yung z, no? So we maintain z as constant, no? So z is constant, so therefore plane strain condition siya. So would that, um, if if ganito yung plane strain condition natin, no? So it's, it's straining on only two directions. Would that mean na uh, ang stresses natin is actually two directions as well? So try to think about it, no. And actually, if you if you think more about it, uh, hindi dapat, de ba? Because if this were and just try to imagine clay, kunwari. Just try to look at a clay, no, and and random lang, no. Uh, imagine na uh, uh, parang siguro cube na clay. If you try to squash your clay, di ba? Ang natural tendency ng isang uh, ng clay material, kunwari, clay, clay to, no, moldable clay to, and you try to squash it in this direction, natural tendency niya is parang magpo-flow siya outward dito sa direction na to, and also in this direction. Tama? So for you to be able to produce a plane strain condition, dapat actually i-restrict mo yung direction na to. So kunwari, gusto ko plane strain siya dito, no? Uh, only moving this direction and this, this direction and also in the z in the y direction so kumare ayo ko mag-move siya dito so the way you do it is kailangan may stress ka na, na ina-apply dito tama para kina counteract mo okay so it means that uh, for you to have plane stress plane strain conditions you need actually three stresses no so meron pa ring stresses on the uh, y which is this one x which is uh, parang ano na lang siya resultant na na, na stresses uh, because of the motion of the ano no uh, of of your material kumbaga yung material mo kasi nagpo-flow papunta diyan thereby producing uh, parang parang residual na na x x direction na uh, stresses no pero yung sa z dapat meron ka ring residual z direction na stress pag ganyan okay so what counters acts that is kung close dai kung close dai to and imagine clay ulit no so para ma-counteract niyo pwede niyo lagyan ng harang dito so kunwari kung may harang kayo diyan Okay, may harang kayo dyan. Then, if you squash this clay, wala siyang, uh, kumbaga, yung kahit gusto niya mag-flow outside papunta sa direction na to, kinakounteract siya by the reaction of uh, doon sa wall or harang na nilagay nyo. Tama? So, it, ang only direction na mapupunta niya is actually this one and this one. Okay? So, that being said, um, if if open die actually siya, so kunwari, wala tong harang na to, ang, ang mag-prevent -pre actually sa kanya 
uh, to flow outward is actually yung frictional forces no because if you take a look at it no the upper side ito kunwari ito this is in contact with uh, your metal tama so if you look at uh, dito kunwari ito so gusto mong mag-flow ng material mo dito and gusto rin niya mag-flow papunta diyan and doon sa opposite na z direction no pero because of frictional forces and uh, you, you can actually compute this no kung enough ba yung isang frictional force to prevent it from flowing using uh, meron tayong uh, parang condition mamaya no uh, pero just try to imagine yung clay mo ulit so if you imagine your clay but now instead of uh, having a uh, yung clay mo is moving in uh, or yung clay mo is cubic in nature no try mo gumawa ng clay na parang ganito no longitudinal siya you quickly realize na pagka squinash mo tong clay na to so if you have a large uh, surface kunwari tapos i-squash mo tong clay na to you'll notice na yung natural tendency ng clay na to is to move in this direction and not on the uh, this direction hindi siya magmo-move dito because that is because parang sa sobrang laki ng parang uh, dire uh, ng direction na to itong length na to mataas uh, mataas yung frictional uh, resistance na Okay? So dahil mataas yung frictional resistance niya, naka-counteract ng parang um, tendency niya to move, to flow outward dito by the frictional forces na papunta dito sa opposite direction. Because frictional forces always act opposite to the direction of motion, di ba? Uh, if you remember your ES101. Uh, if you are moving, kunwari, you're moving this direction and you are in contact with a surface dito, then the frictional forces involved will be on the opposite direction. So parang ganun yung nangyayari dito. So, if your length is long enough uh, relative to your uh, bite, parang you can actually predict kung magiging uh, plane strain condition siya or magiging uh, homogeneous na condition. Okay? So, I, ho I hope that makes some sense, no? Pero this is important again because uh, gusto ko lang i-reiterate na for you to have a plane strain condition, dapat meron kang restrictive force along the uh, in this case, Z direction. No? Kailangan may restrictive force ka doon sa Z direction that prevents it from flowing outward in that direction. Okay? And si Levi Mises uh, equation states that um, in this particular case, meron tayong sigma Y. Tama, no? Sigma Y. Tapos meron din tayong, uh, which is your forging, uh, forging uh, stress. Tapos meron din tayong sigma X, which is the residual stress na parang uh, nagmumove nag-aalaw ng material natin to move in the x direction okay and actually meron tayong third stress which is the sigma z and this sigma z right here is an intermediate stress no so it's between so et, kung ito yung uh, maximum ito yung minimum ito yung intermediate so in terms of uh, sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 ito yung sigma 1 which is the largest this is sigma 3 and this is sigma 2 okay so, si sigma Z here is a stress that uh, restricts the motion of your, uh, uh, restricts the uh, flow of metal on, on one of direction, thereby producing your plane strain condition. Okay? So, ang sinasabi sa ni Levi Mises equation is that yung sigma 2 daw is just the average of the primary sigma 1 and sigma 3. Parang ganyan. And if, if, you, if you try to input this, itong sigma 2 and uh, sigma 2 is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 3 over 2. And we can also say sigma z is equal to sigma y plus sigma x over 2. Kung i-input nyo siya dito sa uh, von Mises criterion natin, you will end up with this equation. So, lalabas itong equation na to. Okay, so from this equation, uh, you differentiate this equation. And uh, from the differential na na-produce nyo, you can now input it dito sa ano natin sa equation na to and you end up with this equation now you can do integral you integrate this equation you end up with this one from here um magse-set tayo ng ano no or i kasi naka ln form pa to so we uh, transform it into an exponential form so we have sigma y is equal to c not exp uh exp of or e raised to the power of negative 2 mu x over h okay okay so where h here is a constant no kasi constant naman yung height natin okay uh oh, before the start of forging that is no constant naman siya 
Tapos x here is a uh, distance from the center. So if you look at it dito sa ano natin. No? So yung x natin kasi we set x equal 0 dito. Then x is just how far it is from the center. No? Okay. So we have uh, this value. And c not para ma... Uh, for us to uh, get rid of this C not no mag-establish tayo ng tinatawag na boundary conditions okay so etong uh, C not na to kasi parang it's a constant of integration lang no okay so for us to find C not then we just establish boundary conditions and for this particular case ito this is our ano no this is the uh, die ito yung mga dies natin tapos ito yung metal work piece okay so this is die and this is the metal okay so, you'll actually find out that uh, meron tayong parang minimum and maximum values. No? So, at the edges, ito dito sa portion na to, this is where you have your minimum value. Okay? Tapos at the center, you'll actually have your maximum. So, ito minimum din. And I mentioned earlier, no, na symmetrical siya. So, ito maximum minimum. So, you can have x is equal to 0 here, starting from here. Tapos, uh, we introduce a new variable ng a. So, a is just equal to, uh, a is equal to byte over 2. No? So, if you divide the byte, kasi itong entire length na to, this is actually your byte, no? b. If you divide that by 2, then that is actually a. So, if you move a distance away from the center, then you reach the minimum value. So, nasa dulo siya. So, if you move negative A distance away, then you have uh, nasa opposite end. Ka naman. So, um, you don't actually need to worry about this uh, negative part. No? Kasi, since symmetrical lang man siya, pwede dito ka lang uh, mag-analyze. Itong uh, sa right, right side, no? kasi positive values. Mas madali kasi mag-analyze lang uh, when using positive values. No? So, we, we just use X is equal to A. So, this means that as we, if you look at it, uh, as we move away from the center, so your, your center is the maximum, you move away, um, tapos punta ka dito sa, sa edges, uh, you'll have the minimum value. So, along the way, parang you have a steady decline. No? So, it's not linear. It's actually a, uh, parang a, I don't know, um, a curve na, 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 na plot. So you move uh, from the maximum value, tapos you're slowly moving down, pababa, pababa, hanggang dumating ka sa minimum value, which is x is equal to a. So uh, with that, pwede actually natin mas solve yung c not just by simply inputting uh, yung boundary conditions natin. So yung boundary conditions natin is actually ito, x is equal to a, which is uh, which gives us uh, the minimum value. And let me redo that. No? Ito, this gives us the minimum. And we also have uh, x equals uh, 0, no? which gives us the maximum. Pero dito, hindi niya na sinob. No? Ang, ang sinob lang niya is x is equal to a uh, because uh, it gives you the minimum. And at the same time, when you have x is equal to minimum, yung sigma x mo is actually equal to 0. No? Kasi if you look at it, dito sa edges, wala namang x value. No? Uh, kumbaga, wala ng sigma x dito no? kasi it's a free surface na siya. Tama. Dito kasi sa ano, uh, if you look at dito sa slab analysis natin. No? So, try to look at the slab. So, you actually have two sigma x's. No? So, my sigma x moving here, my sigma x are moving here. That's because meron ka material dito sa sides na to. Tama? So, that's actually yung ano. So, let me erase that. No? So, if you look at this. So, take a look at the slab. Because of the material, yung material actually yung nagpo-provide ng mga sigma x natin kasi sila yung nagpo-provide ng resistance. So if you if if this wants if this slab wants to extend outwards, it will run into uh, yung other material that is surrounding it. But if you look at the surf free surface no, to the right of the free surface, wala kang material. So that's why sigma x is equal to 0 at that particular portion. Okay? So if you input that boundary condition at the edge, wherein you have x is equal to a, giving you the minimum value, and uh, sigma x is equal to 0, then you will uh, end up with uh, the c naught. No? So, ito yung c naught expression mo. And yung c naught expression mo, pwede mong i-input to find kung ano yung equivalent ni c naught. No? And if you manipulate that, you do everything uh, correctly, then you will end up with this uh, value. So, ito. This is just sigma y is equal to 
sigma not prime and this sigma not prime is what we call as the uh, flow stress no ito yung flow stress so for plane strain conditions ang flow stress natin sigma not prime is just equal to yung ito no uh, let me go back equal actually siya din doon sa levi mesa so ito ito equal siya dito okay etong 2 over square root of 3 sigma not no so uh, para hindi niyo na siya isulat all over again no uh, minsan sinusulat na lang natin as sigma not prime no um, minsan din instead of 2 over square root of 3 ang ginagamit ng uh, mga students is 1.515 which is uh, try to do open it and try to call, uh, look at your calculators no kung okay, double check ko na rin so if it's uh, 2 divided by square root of 3 gives us uh, 1 point I ah, know it's not 515 pala no 1.155 pala sorry so sorry should be 1.5 uh, 1.155 okay and uh correct me if I'm wrong guys ah well, baka kasi kasi I'm working one handed baka mali pala to na input ko sa calculator ko over square root of 3 1.155 okay it's supposed to be 1.155. So, minsan, uh, instead of 2 over square root of 3, 1.155 na lang sinusulat. Times sigma naught. So, uh, again, this is pl for plane strain conditions. No? And later, I'll show you ano yung adjustment na gagawin natin pagka homogenous naman yung condition. Okay? So, that's 1.155 uh, times sigma naught. And sigma naught here is just the, I don't know, uh, pwede rin siyang sigma y. Uh, yung yield strength na matira pero because it might be confused for itong sigma y na to that is acting on the uh, y direction kaya hindi natin ginagamit yung sigma y na notation no? Ma, uh, ginagamit natin sigma naught uh, para mas madali natin ma-identify siya no? so sigma naught siya lang yung uh, yield strength or yield point na nakukuha natin pag gumawa tayo ng uniaxial uh, uh, uniaxial tension test okay so with that, meron tayong uh, yun yung actual tension or compression no? depending on the test you're doing. Okay. So you end up with this one. This is your flow stress multiplied by the uh, exponent of 2u over h times a minus x. And actually, ito equation na to. If you plot this equation, it's actually this curve right here. Okay. So ito siya. Yeah, itong equation na to, sigma y is equal to sigma naught exp uh, times 2 mu over h is actually this uh, ano, no, plot right here. And we call that as a friction curve, no? Uh, means and friction hill. Okay? And uh, if you do the negative side, uh, makukuha mo lang yung symmetrical niya, no? So it's moving in the opposite direction naman. Okay? So that means that uh, a, if you change the value of x, so for example, if you do uh, kunwari you are analyzing um, ano yung instantaneous stress value niya um, in kunwari 1 millimeter away from the center. Okay, so I'm looking at kunwari 1 millimeter dito. So I can actually compute it. No? So kaya kong i-compute ito. Yung instantaneous value niya dito sa point na to, Using this equation. Okay? So... <clears throat> Itong ano, e, e to the 2 mu over h times a minus x. Actually, actually natin siyang isimplify pa further. No? Kasi uh, one of the uh, approximations that we can do is kung meron tayong exp x, so that's e raised to the power of x. If x is small enough, we can actually approximate this to be 1 plus x lang. Okay? So this is uh, this approximation right here. No? Ito. This is the approximation. And if you look at it, uh, you can actually simplify the equation using, uh, kung gusto mo, kung ayaw mong, I don't know, mag deal with exponents, uh, pwede naman ganito lang yung formula. And the assumption is, uh, yung mu natin is quite small, no? And in, in most real world cases naman, mu is small, no? So because mu is small, uh, this entire term becomes small. And therefore, kaya si exp to the x will now be approximately equal to 1 plus x right here. Okay, so x here, ang sinasabi ko x dito is itong buong term na to. Okay, so from here, 
exponent, uh, exp, itong term na nasa loob, let's call it x, no? Or sige, para mas malinaw, let's call it n na lang. Expn equal siya sa 1 over ha. Uh, if you have Expn is, and if n is small, we can assume that this is just equal to 1 plus n, no? And in this particular case, uh, mu almost always is uh, quite small, no? And if it's small, then therefore, itong entire term na to will also be small, no? And, uh, ah, tama. Uh, okay. So, this entire term becomes small and therefore, yung expn is just equal to uh, 1 plus n, making this equation equal to just sigma uh, not prime, which is again close stress, multiplied by 1 plus 2 mu a minus x over h lang siya. Okay? Now, if you want to get the mean uh, tooling pressure, that means um, instead of looking, kasi di ba, itong equation na to, this is actually itong sa friction hill na to, tama? So, let me erase. So, if you look at it, itong tooling pressure, na, uh, yung ano natin, equation, is actually the friction hill right here. No? So, it, it's uh, parang instantaneous, uh, kumbaga instantaneous siya na, parang required flow stress at a particular point uh, from the uh, x equals zero mark or the center line. Tama? Pero if you look at it, hindi naman tayo mas interested masyado doon. No? Uh, ang interested tayo is ano yung parang overall forging pressure or forging stress na na-experience ng metal natin uh, at hindi yung specific point. So hindi tayo interested sa point na to, point na to, point na to, or point na to. No? Parang ganun. Wala tayong particular point na, although sometimes that's also important, pero in most cases, hindi siya masyadong importante. No? What is important to us is yung overall na stress. So, parang ang, ang gusto natin is kunin yung average. So, what we actually do is parang instead of using this friction hill right here, we are trying to parang come up with an equivalent no, na average forging pressure. Parang ganyan. So instead of uh, a friction hill that looks like this, gusto natin ano yung equivalent niya na average na stress value applied to all of the points uh, sa metal na to. Okay? And we can actually compute this, no? And it's it's quite simple lang. So to get the average uh, sigma y, then we just do the average sigma y or the uh, mean tooling pressure or mean uh, forging pressure. This is just actually equal to sigma y max plus sigma y min over 2. Okay? And to get sigma y max, we just uh, input, if you look at the graph, no? sigma y max is equal to where x equals 0. So this is uh, input lang natin x equals 0. Tapos dito sa sigma y min, this is when uh, nasa edge siya, no? yung nung nag-compute ng boundary conditions. This is just equal to x equals a. Tama? So if you do the computation, you'll actually have, uh, see, when x is equal to 0, then this becomes uh, 2 mu a over h. So sigma y max natin is equal to, uh, I, I'm just computing the inside part, no? Kasi, kasi lagay ko na lang din. Yung flow stress plus 1 plus 2 mu a over h. Yan yung max natin. Tapos yung min natin, is equal to sigma not prime. And this is one, uh, a is equal to, uh, x is equal to a, no? So this cancels out. Then this whole term here becomes zero. So this is just equal to one. Okay? So if you take the average of these two, actually, uh, you'll end up with this one. Ito yung makukuha mo equation. Okay? So kaya dyan nakuha yung mean pressure. And this is important because the mean pressure uh, dito natin makukuha yung load. Kasi if you have uh, mean average tooling pressure, if you multiply by, if you want to get the forging load, so let's uh, just say FL yung forging load. If you want to get the forging load, then you multiply sigma y uh, bar or yung uh, average uh, tooling pressure, multiply that by area, then you get the force. No? And in this instance, yung area natin actually is equal to, if you look at it, uh, it's actually equal to this area. no? So let me erase para mas palinaw. So if you want to get the area, 
Actually, kukunin natin area is actually this area right here. Ito. Kasi dyan nag act yung, uh, for, yung stress natin. Tama? So, that area is equal to the byte multiplied by whatever width this is. No? Width or length. Okay? So, if we multiply byte uh, times width, that gives us the area. And therefore, ito, ipalitan ko na, no? So, if you multiply the average uh, tooling pressure uh, by the byte, multiplied by the width and uh, then you get the forging load the average forging load okay you can let's uh call it as fl average or weathering fl bar no? okay now we also have a another condition no and this is a unique condition we call this as a uh, uh, sticky friction so sticky friction occurs when you have a uh, Usually, it's a hot working condition. So, no? when you are working uh, at higher temperatures, kasi the uh, the friction between your die and the uh, die and the metal workpiece markedly increases. No, so ang nangyayari is uh, we have this condition on no? nasi mu uh, yung mu sigma y, which is just actually the uh, the frictional force. No, kasi di ba pag uh, meron kang f uh, if you have a force moving downwards and you want to get the frictional uh, forces uh, acting on the x direction for this particular forging load, then you just multiply the coefficient of friction times f, mu f. Tama? So kaya ito mu sigma y siya. Kasi sigma y yung uh, force natin that is uh, moving our uh, dice. No? So dito, uh, i-replace re natin siya with what we call as your k bar. No? And this is the average shear stress of the material. So uh, if you... If you do the, uh, the substitution, no? and k bar here is just equal to uh, yung 2 sigma naught over square root of 3, uh, which is uh, actually sa ano siya, no? sa, if you look at the uh, von Mises criterion, diba, is equal to k squared, siya, where k is equal to 2 sigma over 3. Parang ganun. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, just review the uh, no, no, yield criteria na, na, na module. But you find out that it should, should be equal to this value, no? 2 sigma over square root of 3, yun yung k natin. And you um, compute for that, then you can solve itong, uh, you end up with this equation right here. No? Ito. You end up with sigma y is equal to, and para mas... Uh, Mas analogo siya, no? We can do 1 plus uh, ipagbalik ta rin ko lang itong A minus X tsaka H no? para mas malin, mas makita niyo yung uh, anal analogy niya or yung similarity niya with the previous equation na na-compute natin. Okay? So parang ganyan siya. Sigma H. And let's try to compare. If you look at it, actually, it's similar, no? Ang nangyari lang dito is nawala lang itong 2 mu. Tama? naging ano lang siya, uh, A minus X over H. And actually, uh, we can say that uh, dito, our mu, when you have sticky friction, no, uh, a condition of sticky friction, we can use this general equation ito, 2 mu A minus X. But instead of using uh, uh, mu, ang gagamitin natin for sticky friction, we use 0 0.5. No? So if you input 0 0.5 dito, 0 0.5, 2 times 0 0.5 is uh, just 1. That's why magiging ganito siya na form. Okay, so medyo analogous naman sila. So just remember that if you have a sticky friction, you always input mu is equal to 0 0.5 such that magiging ganito na yung form niya. Okay, so ito yung mga general approximations no? based on the conditions na we have on the table. Uh, we have kung we have uh, the plane strain condition. Our flow stress sigma naught prime is equal to two over square root of three sigma naught. Pero when we have homogeneous uh, deformation, so that is non-plane strain. No, that is uh, we are now moving in three directions or we are straining in three directions. If you have that condition, then you need to use uh, sigma naught instead of uh, ito. Uh, 2 over square root of 3, you know, tatanggalin mo lang siya, magiging sigma naught lang. So whatever is the sigma um, value from the UTM test, yun yung gagamitin natin. Okay? So how do we decide when uh, 
you have plane strain or homogeneous deformation, ito yung gagamitin natin condition. So it's uh, plane strain when your width over bite, so that's uh, yung, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, no, na parang uh, yung clay experiment natin. If this is large enough, itong width na to is large enough compared to the bite, ang natural tendency ng yung parang clay natin no, is just to move in this direction. Tama? Tapos hindi na siya gagalaw dito sa uh, parang longitudinal axis na to. Okay? And and ang numerical na basis natin dito uh, for this course, no, we use width over bite is greater than 4. Whenever width over bite is greater than 4, then we can assume plane strain siya. If it's not greater than 4, parang pwede natin i-assume yung condition na yung kung babalik tayo dun sa clay example ko, no? para siyang ganito. No? Yung width nito is not uh, significantly larger than the bite. No? And therefore, ang, ang natural tendency nito is parang to move on all three directions. No? Or to flow on all three directions, meaning it will strain in all three directions. And that is not a plane strain condition anymore. No? We call that as homogeneous deformation. Okay? So whenever we do calculations, we always check first kung plane strain by yung condition natin. So just look at width over bite. If you compute for width over bite and uh, it's greater than form, then you, you use plane strain, which now entails that you use 2 over square root of 3 sigma naught for your flow stress. When width over bite is less than uh, 4, no? less than or equal to 4, then you use uh, just sigma naught. Because in that case, you are now using homogeneous uh, deformation. Okay? Tapos ito yung sinabi ko kanina na for uh, yung opposite pala sa non, yung non-sticking friction, tinatawag natin dyan is slipping friction. No? So this is the usual conditions natin where mu is, is very small. No? When mu is, mu is very small, uh, then whatever mu uh, and the, the, the threshold is 0 0.5, when mu is less than 0 0.5, then we have slipping friction yung tinatawag natin dyan and we just use the mu value that is available. Uh, pero pagka meron tayong tinatawag na sticking friction, so that's uh, friction greater than 0 0.5, then we just use 0 0.5. And uh, when we use 0 0.5, uh, if you input that, you will end up with this equation. No? 1 plus A minus X over H. Okay? So, <clears throat> yun lang. Uh, before we proceed to examples, no? uh, meron ba kayong ano, questions? Lloyd and Wes? I, I know that... Okay, naman. Wala naman po. Okay, that's good. No? So, um, let's try to apply uh, itong ano. No? So, let's just remember uh, itong table na to, no? or Whenever we we uh, parang feel confused, no? Sa kung anong values gagamitin natin. Just try to remember this table, no? So, first, assess whether it's plane strain or homogeneous. Tapos, assess whether it's slipping friction or it's uh, sticking friction. Okay, so let's uh, do, siguro uh, we can do problem one sa ano no, uh, problem one ng ano natin. Uh, yung module na to. Okay, so let's do this. Okay. Kita nyo naman yung screen ko no. So problem one is, uh, we have the, a 50 millimeter uh, or we have a 300 millimeter rod with a diameter of 50 millimeters. Tapos 50 millimeters of that 300 millimeters is e offset down natin to increase the diameter by 25 millimeters. Okay? So, ito me medyo baka confusing sa inyo, no? Upsetting is uh, another term for uh, forging, no? Pero basically, ang sinasabi, it's just, this other term pala. It's a specific type of forging method wherein parang uh, a portion of a stock or a rod is uh, increased in diameter. No? So usually, ginagawa to sa mga, kunwari, mga screws or nails. No? So for example, uh, the way you make nails actually is, for example, if this is your rod stock, parang ganyan, ilalagay mo actually siya, siya sa isang chamber. Parang ganyan, no? So kunwari, ilalagay mo sa isang chamber. So medyo close dahil yung dating dito. Tapos, meron kang portion na nakaputrud no so so para let me erase so parang may portion na nakaputrud dito op bari class ah so may portion dito sa stock mo na nakaputrud ng ganyan 
Now what you do is uh, maglalagay ka ng ano, meron kang die that moves downward tapos i kumbaga Jesus ko compress mo tong exposed portion na to. Okay? So by compressing the exposed portion, ang mangyayari is magfa-flatten out siya, magiging ganyan siya. Tama kasi na magmo-move um, kumbaga since uh, you are straining it in the ito kung this is the y direction no you are staying in the y direction then it moves in the actually homogeneous no you are moving in the x and the uh, z direction so para magfo-flow siya evenly outward so magiging ganito yung uh, head niya okay so etong portion na to we now this now becomes the head of the nail or ano and when you remove entirely you remove mo na siya sa parang chamber you produce something that looks like this no So, dyan, ito na yung stock for uh, kung kumbaga ito yung magiging basis mo na to produce your ano, nails. No? So, pwedeng sigurong, kawari, uh, pwedeng may sharpen tong part na to para maging nail siya or kung screw to, lalagyan mo ng imamachine mo na to produce your threads dito. Tapos, imamachine mo din dito to produce uh, kung Philips yan or, or flathead or, or, or whatever type of screw man yan. So, ganyan actually pinoproduce yung Uh, mga screws no and we call this process as uh, an upsetting process no so we uh, forging siya in a way it's a type of forging process pa rin, pero it's specific to uh, parang ganito no na may portion lang na gusto natin i-increase yung diameter okay so hopefully na, na imagine nyo siya and in this sense parang sinasabi natin ito yung kumbaga based on the problem no parang ito this is actually the 50 millimeter portion part ito yung sinasabi na ito yung i-upset natin. Tapos etong part na to, so ito ay drawing ko lang. Ito yung buong 300 mm. Okay? So hope that makes sense. No? Parang ganyan. So may buong 300 mm ka ito, buong 300 mm to. And we are only upsetting 50 mm, a 50 mm portion, which is uh, right around here siguro. I'm just estimating, no? pero parang ganyan. Tapos yung diameter din niya is uh, 50 millimeters, which is important because we will uh, use that in our calculations. No? Okay? So let's try to calculate. Um, first is assess muna natin, although it's obvious, no? usually pag uh, may nakita kayong ano class, no? uh, usually cylinders, yung mga ganun, when we are forging it in along its, uh, ano, no? uh, kumbaga across its uh, circular na cross-sectional area, we usually, this usually means na homogeneous deformation siya. Okay? So, homogeneous siya because if you compute it, yung width niya, so, and uh, since it's circular, no, equal siya. So, kumbaga, if you look at this direction, this is the width. And if you look at this direction, this is the byte. Kunwari, o pwede rin opposite, no? Byte yung nandito. Tapos width niya nandito. But in any case, uh, yung width niya and your byte niya is just equal, no? Width is equal to byte. And therefore, uh, hindi natin na-satisfy yung plain sign condition which is width over byte should be greater than 4. No? In this case, width over byte is just equal to 1 which is not greater than 4. So parang width over byte is equal to 1 because they are equal which is not greater than 4. So we have homogeneous deformation. Okay? So since we have homogeneous deformation, then our sigma here And we use sigma. Our sigma naught prime is just equal to sigma naught. Okay? So wala tayong yung factor natin, no? yung correction factor, which is uh, yung uh, 2 over square root of 3 or yung 1.155. So diretso tayo dito. Okay? So, nasaan uh, ba tayo? Compare. Uh, tapos increase daw natin yung diameter by 25. So parang ang ending is From 50 millimeters, uh, dito 50 millimeters to no, 50. Mga ganyan. We end up with uh, an increase of 25. So this becomes now 75 millimeters. Mga ganyan. And obviously, meron din change dito sa H niya, no? Itong H magbabago din siya. And we can use constancy of volume para makompute yung change na yun. Okay? So let's compute. Uh, compare the required average forging load at the end of the stroke 
uh, during cold working conditions with that of hot working conditions. Okay? So, this is important class, no? Itong may sinabi siyang uh, itong end of stroke, no? Ito? So, this is important class. Oh. Itong term na ito, no? End of stroke. So, in forging, meron tayo uh, parang merong cycle yung stroke na rin, no? So, we have start and we have the end. So, the start is just, uh, for example, if this is your uh, die, ito, ito yung die, ito yung metal work piece, kasi ito yung uh, other die sa baba, ito yung metal, no? So, if you, before you apply any force, no? So, uh, just before the onset of uh, plastic deformation, that is where you have the start of your forging stroke. Okay? So you have start of forging stroke. Now, now, pagka, when you begin to forge this, no, actually, nag-ramp up actually yung forging load required. So if you were to graph the wari, sigma y bar, uh, over uh, delta H. So I say delta H para ano, no? the amount of uh, deformation na ipoproduce ko dito. Or uh, let's just say general na lang. No? Uh, if I try to plot the delta Y bar with the stroke, then I can see na actually nagra-ramp up siya. No? And I don't actually know the exact uh, itsura ng curve, no? pero nagra-ramp up siya. It could be this way, pwede rin this way. I'm not really quite sure kung ano yung shape ng curve. No? Pero uh, the point being is, uh, it starts off smaller and it ends at a larger value. So if this is the start, this is start, then this is actually the end. Okay, so mas mataas yung end of the stroke. So why why is uh, this, uh, this so? No? So we remember that diba, the flow stress is the amount of uh, and we go back to the discussion uh, and sana naalala niyo pa no so parang sinasa, sinabi ko dati if this is the stress stress strain diagram no the flow stress is actually the instantaneous stress that is required to continuously deform your metal no so it makes sense because uh, pagka you are continuously deforming your metal nagko continuously nag uh, introduce ka ng strain hardening effects so it makes sense na kunwari from this deformation if you proceed further then it requires actually a higher uh, stress value no? or higher flow, flow stress. So actually, uh, within this, the, the forging stroke cycle, uh, yung sigma mo, sigma, no, sigma prime, which is your flow stress, is actually also increasing. No? Para nag increase siya as you introduce more and more deformation. Okay? So uh, if you look at the equation, the, the ang equation natin is sigma y, is equal to sigma naught multiplied by, and let's use the uh, EXP form na lang. So let's use EXP 1, ah no, sorry, EXP 2 mu A minus X over H. Tama? That's the uh, equation, no? Uh, I double check ko lang. Baka nagkamali ako. Uh, hindi yung 1 plus, ano no, eh, I'll just use the, ano, yung exponent, exponential formula. Tama. 2 mu A over... Tama. So, ito yung equation natin. <clears throat> so, if you look at this equation, no, yung sigma y bar natin, also, if, sigma y muna, no, kung sigma y lang, uh, itong value na to is constantly increasing no? from the start to the end. So actually, nag-increase to and if this is increasing, then this also, ito, this is an increasing value, then this is also an increasing value. Tama? So that is the first reason kung bakit uh, yung at the start of the forging stroke, it's smaller as compared to the end of the forging stroke. Now, uh, we also note that itong H, no? the H is actually also changing. Kasi diba, from the start of the forging stroke, uh, you begin with uh, a, kunwari, ito, no? Kung ito, kung ito yung metal mo, as ito, pwede ito yung example natin. If you apply, uh, if you start here, then you end here, or ito yung end ng forging stroke mo, end. Then actually, your metal, 
has changed, no? Ito na yung bagong metal mo. Ito yung metal natin. Tama? And if you look at it, yung metal natin has a different na height na. Uh, yung height dito. Yung height natin is actually smaller than the initial height uh, from which it be began with. No? So if this is the initial height, this is H naught. Ito actually H final. Tama? And yung H final natin is smaller than H naught. Okay? And that means that uh, if you were to compute the load, no? yung H na to, bababa tong value na to. Tama? Ito. So this value becomes smaller and uh, when the denominator becomes smaller, itong term na to becomes uh, greater. And when this term becomes greater, since exponent to e to the power of, ano to eh, e raised to the power of uh, itong whole value na to, kumari n, e raised to the power of n, kung mas malaki yung n na to exponent, mas malaki din yung buong term na to. And kung mas malaki yung buong term na to, lalaki din yung term na to. Tama? So parang double whammy siya no. So when you uh, start so bukod sa nag-i-increase itong sigma naught natin or sigma naught prime bukod sa increasing yung magiging flow stress natin because of the strain hardening effects increasing din yung required um, sigma y or required forging load because pa-decrease nang pa-decrease din yung uh, height natin. Okay? And this is uh, apparent also, no, class. You'll also notice na sobrang laki ng, and if you go to the industry, isa to sa mga problems din sa industry, no? Because uh, that's why in the industry, you rarely see uh, sheets being forged, no? So you would think na dapat mas madali mag-forge, no? Kasi parang simple lang equipment. We just uh, apply a lot of, uh, parang, we just uh, use a die, tapos if a forge i o forge lang natin para ma-produce to mga sheets no so we could begin with something like kunwari uh, a slab siguro uh, kunwari ito yung blank natin tapos i -const constantly reduce lang natin to produce this uh, uh, parang sheet na to pero actually hindi natin kaya magawa to no because of the limitations of the ano because uh, sobrang laki ng forging load na kailangan because uh, constantly nagde-decrease itong height na to so there is a, a sort of limit no so may certain limit sa height na beyond which parang impractical na na mag-forge ka kasi masyado nang maliit yun. That's why in in most industries you, when you are uh, doing uh, sheets no usually if you want to produce sheets rolling yung ginagamit natin as opposed to forging no. So parang rare na may gumagamit ng forging. All, almost always rolling lang talaga yung process na ginagamit. Okay? Uh, sagit lang kaso, uh, one minute, may it's a check lang ako.
Hello, sorry. Ah, may, may kinawala akong delivery. Lazada kasi ako ng Lazada. And anyway, ah, nandiyan na ba kayo? Lloyd and Wes? Hindi naman kayo umalis, no? Ayun, thank you for the feedback. Okay, so continue natin yung discussion, no? Saan ba tayo tumigil? Uh, let me catch my breath, no? Ano uh, sinasabi ko kanina? Parang sabi ko na in 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 industries no uh, instead of uh, when you deal with sheets hindi talaga tayo nagpo-forge ng sheets uh, rolling talaga ginagamit natin specifically because of the itong height na, na na tendency no so as we lower the height parang tumataas yung uh, forging load na kailangan natin para ma-continuously deform yung material natin pero bakit ko din knowing tong square na to bakit ko din knowing to <laughs> Lloyd, naalala mo ba? And Naka West? standby pa rin yung print. Sorry, ano, ano yun Lloyd? Naka standby pa rin. Ay, naka standby pala, sorry. Eto, ano, uh, bakit ko din knowing itong square na to? May reason ba? Kalimutan ko tuloy yung may sinasabi pa ako dito. Etong square na to. <laughs> sorry. Sa mga, may, naka, naalala nyo ba Lloyd or West? Ano ba sinasabi? Uh, anyway, baka hindi importante itong square na to. Sige, sige. Uh, kalimutan lang natin yung square na to. May reason siguro. Pag binalagyan natin yung video, maalala natin. Anyway, so dito, sa case na to, um, so I'm trying to make a point class, no? So whenever you deal with this, ano, types of problems, kailangan talaga tandaan nyo parati or i-observe nyo parati kung ano yung language. No? So for example, ito, ang sinasabi is end of the forging stroke. So we are analyzing not at this portion, we are analyzing at this portion right here, itong end of the forging stroke. Okay? So, meron siyang, ano no? Uh, meron siyang flow stress values na binigay. So for example, ito, and we assume that this flow stress value is at the end of the forging stroke na no? Kasi isa lang naman binigay. Pero minsan, Um, may dalawang flow stress na ibibigay sa inyo. So kung nangyari, flow stress at the start, meron din flow stress at the end. And usually, flow stress at the end will be greater than flow stress at the start. So you might be also wondering kung bakit ang flow stress for code is different from flow stress of hot working. And this makes sense no? because diba, if you remember uh, your uh, physical metallurgy, pag uh, naka-hot working ka, it actually requires lower stresses to continually deforming your metal, meaning lower flow stresses, because at hot working conditions, meron kang um, annealing effects na nangyayari, which, uh, which offsets the strain hardening effects. So this makes sense no, na, na at hot working conditions, na mas mababa yung flow stress natin. Okay? Tapos dito naman, mayroon siyang coefficient of friction uh, of 0.15 for the cold working, tapos uh, 0.4 naman for hot working. So I mentioned earlier, no? that when you are working in hot working conditions, usually mas mataas yung friction natin. So pagka mas malamig, mas, uh, mas malamig yung conditions, mas magiging uh, closer to slipping friction yung condition natin. Okay? So uh, this time, uh, gusto natin i-compare yung dalawa. No? Uh, so ang sinabi lang kasi is compare the required average forging load. So we'll be using yung FL na equation, no? yung FL bar which is FL bar is equal to sigma Y bar multiplied by W times uh, byte. No? Tama? And in this case, equal actually itong dalawang to. And sorry, in this case, kasi circular siya, we'll, we won't be using width times byte. No? So yung gagamitin natin is uh, pi R final. So na... Uh, Final is uh, ito. This is the final state. And ito yung initial state natin. Let's call this as uh, initial F. I know. So, uh, so, ang kukunin natin is the final na, na forging uh, radius niya. Kumbaga, or, or the final area when at the end of the forging stroke. So, RF squared pi R squared over 2. Tama? Ah, no, no. Sorry. Pi R squared lang pala. Or pwede ding pi, uh, pi D squared over 4. Ang binigay dito is diameters kasi ang binigay. No? Tama ba? Uh, 50 millimeter diameter. So para hindi na tayo mag-convert, 
let's just use d na lang din. So we do pi d final squared over 4. So yan yung magiging final area natin. Okay? So let's compute for sigma y bar. So how do we compute for sigma y bar? And I'll show, siguro I'll just show, ano no, cold working conditions as kayo nabala mag compute nitong hot working conditions. And try to compare, no, kung ano yung uh, difference nilang dalawa. Kung mas mataas ba or mas mababa. Kasi if you look at this, uh, mas mababa siya. Mas mababa yung flow stress which means mas mababa dapat yung sigma y bar dahil uh, sigma y bar is directly proportional to flow stress. Pero at the same time, mataas din yung mu niya. And mu is also, uh, ano, is also directly proportional uh, to your sigma y. So parang kumbaga nag-offset tong dalawang to no. So tingnan natin kung uh, tingnan niyo pala kung kung ano yung higher value. Okay? Or mas kumbaga mas mas uh, pronounce yung effect niya doon sa y bar natin. Okay? So sigma y bar muna no. So if we are using sigma y bar, then we can actually use the yung form na ganito no. So, sigma y bar is equal to, and pwede siguro i-switch ko na lang yung screen ko. Browse. Yan, ito. So, pwedeng ito yung gamitin natin na form, no? yung average, which is this one. Tama? Pwedeng ito yung gamitin natin na form. So, naka-average forging load na. And ito, instead of H lang, ang gagamitin natin is yung H final. Tama? Yung final height kasi yung mas importante sa atin dahil end of forging stroke yung tinatanong. If ang tinanong is uh, at the start of forging stroke, then instead of HF, HI yung gagamitin natin. Okay? So, again, be very careful with that, guys. No? Dapat i-tingnan nyo kung ano yung specifically tinatanong ng problem. Okay? So we have balik tayo. sigma y bar natin will be equal to sigma not and this is uh, this is just I don't know um, homogeneous deformation to because we have established na uh, width nya and byte are equal. So this is sigma not uh, multiplied by one plus mu oops one plus mu a over h mu a over h not and also if you look at this to a is also i don't know i sorry bakit uh bakit h not h f dapat if you look at this a is also increasing no because if you look at it si byte na as you go from the start of the forging stroke to the end of the forging stroke nag increase din tong byte na to. Tama? From you started with this one. This is the initial byte. Pero you ended with this one. Ito yung final byte natin. Tama, no? So, magiging ano din to? Uh, A final. Kasi we are dealing with the final uh, forging stroke. No? Okay? So, <clears throat> let's compute. Um, ano ba yung compute natin? Uh, we compute for ano muna uh, itong mga final dimensions muna no and uh, to be able to do this we use the constancy of volume no so constancy of volume so that is almost always assumed no sa mga uh, ganitong uh, calculations we assume na walang material na nawawala and this makes a lot of sense no Kasi when you are forging, dapat nagpo-flow lang yung material natin from uh, one region to another. Uh, and therefore, dapat walang natatanggal na, na, na volume. No? Kasi uh, kumbaga, same lang naman yung density ng material natin from the initial to the final. So this means that the initial volume is equal to the final volume. Okay? So if we compute for this and we only look at the, ano no, pwedeng ang i, kumbaga, I isolate natin tong portion na to. We can isolate just this portion, no? Itong uh, parang maliit na portion of this uh, cylinder right here kasi siya lang naman na magde-deform. Okay? So if we isolate that, that's the 50 millimeter portion, no? So we can do ang volume niya is equal to 50 
capacity. Okay. It's equal to 50. So that's height. Diba ang formula ng equation ng uh, cylinder is pi d squared over 4 multiplied by uh, multiplied by the length no, of the uh, no, of the cylinder. Tama? So we do pi uh, d squared natin is uh, we started with initial natin is 50 millimeters no uh, di ko na lalagyan ng units millimeters na ba yun uh, 50 millimeters it's 50 millimeters yung diameter so that's 50 multiplied by uh, the length which is 50 din tama kasi again i isolate lang natin no ito lang so yung 50 millimeter portion lang na to yung kukunin natin so 50 uh, divided by 4. So, I don't, sorry, pi 50 squared times 50, over 4 times 50. Tama? Tapos equal dapat to sa pi over 4. And we can actually cancel the pi over 4. No? Equal siya sa, uh, yung final diameter natin is 75. Tama? 75 ito. Kasi dapat daw, it should increase, ang sabi dito, uh, the diameter increases by 25. So meaning plus 25 siya. So that becomes uh, 75 squared times, ito na yung hinahanap natin. So this is H final. No? Tama? So uh, we have 75 squared H final. And we can compute for this. no? Uh, H final is equal to and kung pwede, kunin nyo na lang calculators nyo. Nasaan ba yung calculator? Pwede bang may isa mag-solve? Lloyd or Wes? Kaya nyo ba yung solve doon kasi? 22.222. Ano, ano, sorry? 22.222. 22.22. 2, parang, I don't know. Ganyan? Tama, Lloyd. Yes. Okay, thank you, Lloyd. So, so that's 22.22. Yun yung ilalagay natin na H final. Tapos yung A final natin, uh, we have a B final is equal to 75. Therefore, A final is equal to 75 over 2, which is 37.5. Tama no? 37.5. Okay. So, pwede natin isolve to no? So, we have uh, sigma naught natin. And uh, let's do cold working first. So, that's 320. Multiplied by 1 plus mu, ano yung mu? 0.15. So that's 1 plus 0.15 times A final natin is this one, 37.5. Tapos yung H final natin is 22.22. Okay? So with that, uh, Kaya na natin masolve yung sigma y bar. And from sigma y bar, multiply natin by uh, initial, uh, yung, yung final niya na, ano no, na area. Then we can get the forging load. Okay? So now you compare that forging load. Yung nakuha yung forge, forging load dyan, kukompare nyo naman pag what if hot working yung conditions. That's, uh, and you decide if it's greater than or, or, or less than. So, yeah. So if the question, wari, mayroon pang further question, no? If you were the uh, the kumbaga, engineer that's assigned to this, uh, based purely on the forging loads required, ano yung mas preferred process nyo? Parang ganun. So kaya nyo din masagot yun, no? Uh, generally, pag, generally speaking, pag mas mababa yung forging uh, pressure or forging load, mas mababa yung energy na kailangan tama kumpara sa higher forging load and pressure so kung gusto niyo makatipid sa kuryente or energy consumption mas maganda na kunin natin yung lower forging load and th that's of course assuming na uh, yung hot working hindi nagko-consume ng additional uh, parang kuryente pa no pero almost always pag hot working ka magko-consume ka talaga kasi iinitin mo pa yung material mo no so th this can also be ano pa no parang further Kumbaga, marami pang ways na ma magiging complicated the question na to. So, for example, pwede rin ibigay sa inyo na, kunwari, ang para makakuha ng uh, 
hot working conditions dapat uh, in- may consumption ka ng energy na ganitong amount. So with that said, kaya bang ma-justify na mag hot working condition as opposed to cold working? Given that uh, parang ano, energy consumption, may mga ganun pang cases no. So so you would imagine na uh, there are many ways that you can manipulate this problem no, but as long as you get the basics down, kayang-kaya naman siya ma-solve no. Okay, so hindi ko na mukhang kasi ano no, uh, kulang na tayo sa time. And uh, medyo mabagal talaga ako mag-work ngayon no, because I'm working one-handed. So I, I think I, I'll leave problems two and three to you guys. Tapos kung may question na lang, pwede kayong magtanong sa akin through the ano no, through our uh, Google chat. Pero meron ba kayong questions, uh, Wes and Lloyd? No? May, may questions ba kayo so far dito sa problem? Wala naman po sa akin. Okay. That's good. No? Sabay pala. <laughs> Sabay kayo. Uh, pero uh, tingin nyo na, na kung hindi ko sinabi yung itong upsetting, mag-gets nyo kaya, uh, nag-gets nyo ba siya? Reading just this, no? Nag-gets nyo na ito yung nangyayari sa kanya? Hindi, sir. Kung hindi nyo explain yung upset. Aha, okay. So, medyo baka doon tayo magkakaproblema, no? Yung imagination, actually. Tapos, yung isa pang problema sa mga estudyante is yung, kunwari, ganito, no? Kunwari, togging operation naman. So, uh, hopefully, nabasa nyo yung, ano, no? Yung, yung module. Pero, cogging is when we only, uh, meron tayong die, pero it only um, parang hits a, a portion, no? So, parang, kunwari, dito lang. So para kumbaga itong portion natin gusto natin siyang i, i- increase yung kware gusto natin maging ganyan siya no. So gusto natin na increase yung diameter niya or something or increase yung uh, length. And then you can also do a cogging operation no. So one of the uh, problems that students um, encounter is alin dito yung byte. So always ganun, no? yun, yun yung mag- nagiging problem na students kasi hindi nila ma-identify kung alin si byte at alin si width. Tama? Kasi ito medyo weird din siya. No? Kasi is this the byte? And this is the width? Or balik tat, is this the width? Kasi it would matter. no Kasi if you look at it, uh, iba yung i-input po dito sa mga calculations natin. Eh. So if you look at the calculations, uh, yung byte, whatever you establish as the byte, yun yung i-input nyo dito sa A portion na to. So, yun yung medyo nakakalito. Okay? So, siguro, ang best tip ko sa inyo is um, try to identify based on how the problem is stated, no? Kung alin yung, um, lalo na pag plain strain condition siya, no? It, it's easier to look at it if it's plain strain condition kasi um, whichever the, the the material flows uh into or kung ano yung isang direction ng move apart from the uh, direction that is uh, following the forging load is actually where the byte is no so for example if ang sinabi is uh, ganito siya if this is the case kunwari lang ganito yung condition kunwari then in this particular scenario and hindi nagbago yung plane strain to ah kunwari plane strain to then this is actually your byte Kasi yun yung nag-change ang direction. And based on slab analysis, the byte is uh, is in the same direction as the direction of the uh, parang flow. Flow of the material. Tama? So, if ang gin- sinabi namang scenario, kunwari plain strain ulit, sinabi naman is um, magiging ganito yung material natin. So, after cogging, instead of uh, parang nag-extend siya pa ganyan, nag-extend siya ng pa ganito. So, ito yung mga parang final itsura niya. Then, in this case, ang byte natin will be this one. Tama? So, wherever uh, nag-flow yung material natin, that is where the byte is. No? Okay? Tapos, ang, ang general rule also is uh, the width is greater than the byte no but, but there are exceptions no? for example kan uh, for example ito no yung width naman dito if you look at it is smaller than the byte no Tama? if you just visually look at it smaller than the byte pero in in general 
the width is supposed to be larger than the byte no because again the uh, our materials have a tendency to move in the direction of uh, least resistance no? so for example if ganito siya yung clay example ulit natin ito yung width niya ito yung byte niya eh, ang tendency ng material na to kung i-squash natin to kumbaga is to move in this direction so kasi ito yung parang uh, direction of least, least resistance no because again kung mas konti yung frictional forces dito as compared sa frictional forces sa long length na to so that's why it's it's actually uh, opposing it no? okay so yun uh, eh, maybe it would take uh, some bit of practice no or parang uh, siguro just try to read more some modules natin and if you have any questions just uh, message me pero based sa uh, in, in in my experience sa uh, sa sa in teaching this course no uh, ito yung pinaka common mistake ng mga estudyante yung hindi nila ma-identify kung alin yung width alin yung byte okay so yun lang siguro for for today thank you uh, Lloyd and Wes no for for taking the time to come to our synchronous session and for those na unfortunately hindi makasama ngayon naka-record naman tong session na to and I'll be sharing this session as well so uh, we can end with that Again, thank you, uh, Lloyd and Wes. Thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, see you next week, guys. Bye bye. And kona yung meeting ah.